welcome again to a new lecture in power electronics in this lecture we will focus on the diode rectifiers let us see the introduction the diodes play a very crucial role in rectifiers converting the ac signal into unidirectional signal so ac means the alternating current which is changing with respect to time t so if you have a signal which is varying with respect to time t with the magnitude then it can be converted to one signal which is unidirectional and that can be accomplished with the help of the rectifiers and in the rectifiers the diodes play a very important role because rectifiers are built with the help of the diodes the rectifiers are a type of ac to dc converters also known as absolute value converters so alternating current will be converted to dc current and they are known as absolute value converters the output voltage waveform of a rectifier it is just the mirror of the shape of the ac input voltage so if we have the ac input voltage as vs with respect to time t then the output voltage v not which is unidirectional it will be having the mirror shape so the shape of this one will be in the mirror with the negative portion becoming the positive so here you have the negative portion which is again becoming positive so the output voltage will be equal to the mod of vs or the magnitude of vs rectifiers are classified as single phase rectifier or three phase rectifiers depending upon how many signals you are using in three phase we have r y v phase sequence if we are using all the three phases r y v then we have three phase rectifiers if you have only one phase with respect to neutral then that is a single phase rectifier depending upon the input supply single phase rectifiers again can be classified as half wave and full wave so when we have the input signal which is having both half one positive and another negative if only one of the half is rectified then it is a half wave rectifier if both the wave is rectified then it is a full wave rectifier single phase half wave rectifiers those simplest are not commonly used in industrial applications so half wave rectifier in the single phase supply are the simplest one in terms of understanding the principle but it is not used in industries in this context whatever the rectifiers we are going to study the diodes which comprise the rectifiers are assumed to be ideal so when we say ideal diodes it means that the recovery time or the reverse recovery time is zero and the forward voltage drop is also zero so whatever the problems or the theory that we study in rectifier involving the diodes they will be ideal in nature performance parameters so if you have a rectifier whose input supply is ac and the output supply is dc so rectifier is a controlled converter which is converting the ac supply to the dc supply it means the input we have ac and the output we have the dc again this ac supply can be either the single phase or it can be three phase the output can be half wave or it can be full wave depending upon how many cycles or positive or negative half are being rectified the target of using a rectifier is to get ideal dc supply in the output voltage but what we get is the voltage with a ripple the ripple is a slight deviation from the ideal voltage in the output voltage or the load voltage so practical rectifiers produce output voltage with harmonics or ripples which we can see it here despite aiming for a pure dc output so the aim is to get the pure ideal dc output rectifiers are power processors striving for minimal harmonic contact 
So this should be ideally equal to zero. Then we have minimal harmonic content in the DC output while maintaining the input current sinusoidal. So whatever the current we are drawing from the supply, it has to be sinusoidal in nature and in phase with the input voltage for near unity power factor. So whatever the load we are using, depending upon that, the voltage and current should be having the phase which is unity power factor. Assessing the rectifier quality involves analyzing the harmonic contents of input current, output voltage and output current. There are various performance parameters to assess the rectifier quality because many parameters are involved in the rectifier such as the input voltage, output voltage, input current, output current, the efficiency and so on. Fourier series expansions are utilized to determine the harmonic content for voltage and the current. These voltage V0 may not be pure DC. There will be some ripples present. So we can use the Fourier series expansions to determine how much harmonic content are present in the voltage and the current. When we talk about the performance parameters of a rectifier, this depends upon various parameters such as what is the output or the load voltage and the current. So as we know, the output is basically DC, so we can get the voltage DC and the current DC. Now these are the average quantities. Similarly, if we talk about the DC power, which is the product of the voltage and the current to get the output DC power. The RMS output voltage and the current we can measure as the RMS voltage and the RMS current. Similarly, if we compute the AC power, which is the product of RMS voltage into RMS current. If we try to determine the efficiency, in this term we say rectification ratio because the AC supply is converted to DC supply. So it is rectification and the efficiency that we compute is the output power by input power but here the output power is DC and the input power is AC. So the rectification ratio measures the quality of the output waveform indicating how efficiently the rectifier converts the input power to a pure DC power. So input power which is AC output power which is DC but the DC is not pure it will have some ripples present so to measure the quality of the output waveform we use this efficiency concept for a pure DC output the conversion efficiency would be unity so here we can get unity if we get pure DC output the output voltage V0 will be equal to the DC value which is the rectified one plus some amount of ripple and this ripple is basically AC. So you have the output voltage which is summation of the DC plus the AC quantity. So the effective RMS value of the AC component of the output voltage if you want to compute. So what is the AC component of the output voltage? It is under root of V RMS square minus V DC square. So VDC will have the more content and there will be some content of RMS voltage which is AC quantity. The form factor which is the measure of the state of the output voltage waveform is given by the ratio of the VRMS by VDC. Remember the output we required is pure DC but some RMS or the AC quantity will be there because of ripple. So the shape will be not pure DC, hence the form factor is required. The ripple factor, which is the measure of the ripple content in the output voltage waveform is given by under root of V RMS by V DC square minus one, or I can say that under root of form factor square minus one. So ripple factor will be the measure of how much ripple or the AC quantity in the output DC waveform we have. Transformation utilization factor. Since we are converting the AC supply to DC supply, this AC supply again we have been using as a step down 
transformer. So here you have the primary voltage and then the secondary voltage. This is step down transformer with some ratio, maybe one is to N. So the transformation utilization factor is given by what is the power output DC by the source voltage and the source current. So at the output or the load, you will be having the DC power but and the input you will be giving the source voltage and the source current and these are the rms voltage and the rms current of the transformer secondary which is present in here so if we have a voltage of in mn kilovolt so first we will be stepping down to some reasonable voltage which is 220 volt maybe or the user voltage may be 3 volt then it will be given to the rectifier for the conversion so we are interested here in the transformer secondary voltage. Power factor is the ratio of the output AC power by the power of the secondary of the transformer given by the product of BS into IS. The crest factor commonly used to specify the peak current rating of a device or the components provide insight into the peak to average ratio of the waveform. So whatever the devices or the component we are using, we have to measure the peak current. Hence, the peak to average ratio is known as the crest factor. So here we take the peak current divided by the average current. So we get the crest factor. The diode rectifiers convert the AC voltage from the main supply to the DC voltage for the electronic products. So electronic loads are generally consuming the DC power at a very low voltage. So we require diode rectifiers. AC voltage converted to a pulsating DC voltage using diodes or thyristors. So we can convert the AC to DC using two devices. So this is a rectification principle and this can be converted using a diode or a thyristors. There is a difference between a diode and a thyristor. The diode is uncontrolled device whereas the thyristor is basically controlled device. Now what is the difference between uncontrolled and controlled? So if we draw the circuit diagram of a diode we have anode and the cathode and these conduct when the knee voltage is exceeded. But if you have the gate signal you can basically control this voltage. We will study very deep the thyristors in the coming lectures. Now we will focus on diode rectifiers first and then move to the thyristor rectifiers. So the pulsating DC voltage filtered to provide smooth DC voltage. So here you have the uh, ripples which is the pulsating DC voltage. It will be filtered so electric electronic filter will be used to get the smooth DC voltage. When we talk about the rectifier classification this is two types uncontrolled and the controlled rectifiers if we use diodes it is uncontrolled if we use thyristors it is controlled rectifiers when we talk about the uncontrolled rectifiers we use diodes as a power switch so the diode will be used as a power switch the turn on and turn off of diode is uncontrolled you cannot control the turn on and the turn off of the diode it is automatic process when the input voltage exceeds the diode breakdown voltage so it is forward biased you will be having turn on and reverse biased you will have turn off the diode based rectifier topologies termed uncontrolled rectifiers so whatever the uncontrolled rectifiers we will study first they are all involving the diode based rectifier topologies the control rectifiers utilize the control power semiconductor switches. So we have power semiconductor switches. This we may have the thyristors in different form like MOSFET, IGBTs and so on, which we will discuss in very detail on the control rectifiers. When we talk about the power generation, distribution and utilization, these are predominantly in the AC form. So whatever the power being generated, transmit or utilize, it is AC. But the electronic devices, you will be requiring the DC 
which necessitate the rectification and filtering of the AC voltage. AC input source obtained from the single phase supply for low to medium power NAND needs and the three phase supply for medium to high voltage power requirements. So the input source of AC may be single phase or three phase. The role of a transformer and limitations. So transformer scale the voltage or isolate the input from rectifier output. It increase the cost, size and weight of a rectifier. So the limitation of the transformer is the cost will increase, the size will increase and the weight will increase. When we talk about the uncontrolled rectifier circuit, it primarily utilizes the diode semiconductor switches. The diodes connected in various topological configurations we will see and the input source and classifications we have. The source of rectifier circuit considered as sinusoidal voltage source like a mains or the grid. So you have the sinusoidal voltage and based on the input source you have single phase rectifier circuit or the three phase rectifier circuit. So this input source may be single phase or three phase. When we talk about the single phase versus three phase, the rectifier circuit topologies designed for single phase or three phase grid applications may have single phase rectifier circuits can be half wave rectifier or it can be full wave in the form of a center tap or full wave in the form of bridge rectifier. So we will focus our discussion on this in the lecture number three using the diode or what we say is uncontrolled rectified circuit topologies. So this complete the introduction of the diode rectifiers. Next lecture we will start with the topology using the diodes. Thank you for now.